this is the second part of the documentary I have made to call out the gambling practices within CSGO. You definitely need to watch the first part before watching this one, and I know it's a bit long, but you cannot treat a subject like that in a 30 second format. Time to address the elephant in the room, that is Valve. It is a fascinating company with a tentacular influence. A fun fact about them is how scalable their business model is. Valve brings 33 times more gross revenue per employee than Amazon. And this is something they talked about, they have designed it that way. If there is money to be made efficiently, you can trust that Valve is gonna be right around the corner. In 2016, after the media started to catch up with what was happening around CSGO and gambling, if you remember uh, Phantom Lord and Tim Martin, you know, bunch of good humans, Valve was forced to react, and they have addressed this now famous cease and desist letter towards those CSGO gambling websites, telling them to stop operating within 10 days or they will take action, right? That was seven years ago. So out of curiosity, I checked how many of these websites are still online today. You would think there would be none, but actually no, five of them are still here, operating like nothing ever happened. They still have CSGO in their name, they still accept deposit and withdraw with CSGO skins, and they still use the Steam login API. What was the point of that letter? I don't know. What we do know is that, technically, any use of the Steam API for commercial purposes is breaching their TOS. And recently, like two months ago, they updated their Steam online conduct policy to include that gambling is also prohibited. Following that, in the next month, about 100 plus traders that seem to be linked to gambling got banned for a hard loss of $10 million in skins. So every evidence seems to point towards the fact that Valve knows exactly what is going on around CSGO and gambling, but either they do not want to take action or they cannot take action. Either way, nothing changes. And now it is time to talk about the CSGO cases and Counter-Strike, please hear me out. I know just how popular these things are, but let's look at it strictly from the fact. You're spending money to open one, something spins and the outcome is random, and the item you get in exchange can be 3 cents, just like 30,000. In fact, what is the first thing you're gonna do after unboxing an item that is a little bit rare? Right click, sell on the community market, and check the price of what you've just unboxed. And if you really think about it, how different is it from the CSGO gambling websites we talked about earlier? Have you ever been asked to verify your age or your identity to open CSGO cases? So now, as I make my uh, case, let's open a few. Most of the things that would be considered a problem for the CSGO gambling websites would also apply here. You can deposit with many methods and you can also use the Steam gift cards, which are sold in many physical stores. So if you don't have a credit card, it's not a problem. The opening animation looks very similar to slot machines and we even find similar mechanics like a near miss. Look. Here's one. You can spend how much you want and you won't trigger any alarm and you can easily sell your winnings on the Steam market to get some more balance and gamble it again. Your age won't get verified and there isn't any self-exclusion feature. And on top of it, you can cash out your winnings to your bank account with the help of third parties. I am not describing an unregulated gambling website. I am talking about Counter-Strike. These are the features available to anyone who has access to the game, regardless of their age. In the month of March 2023, it's estimated that Valve made around $100 million in profits coming from CSGO cases. We know that because 39.5 million cases were opened during that month and $2.50 each, we are closing in on 100 million. Think of it this way, by buying a key, you're going to deposit $2.50 and you hope to get something greater than your deposit. This is what CSGO cases are. However, in this case, unlike a casino, you are not playing against Valve, right? Like, if you open an item that can be sold for 300 euro. Or in this case, 20,000 euro. Well, that money isn't gonna come from Valve. They will come from a player that will buy the skin from you. So on your deposit, the $2.50, essentially their house edge is 100%, Valve keeps everything. And in fact, if you sell your skin on the Steam market, Valve will take another 15% cut on top of the sale. Like I said, if there is money to be made efficiently, Valve is gonna be right there. And while CSGO gambling websites are very popular, CSGO case unboxings are even more. 
It'll always be my all-time favorite game. It will! Yes! Woo! I love Counter-Strike. Talk to me. How much is it worth? I need to know in chat. Spam it. That's a $16,000 knife. Just like that. Three, two, one. Oh, shit. Let's go. Yeah. Oh, my God. Let's go. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Fucking delusion. Fuck off. Stop. 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 And now the mood is completely it's set up for it. Oh, it's, oh, it's another blue. What we got for you here is a case opening. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. In today's video, I am going to be opening 500 recoil cases. 10 of every single case. Two of every single case. 300 revolution case. 2,000 revolution cases. Juiced. Ah, yes! One, two, three, four, Holy f this feeling! Oh my, I feel so alive right now! <laughs> oh my god, I'm so addicted, I think! Unboxing a gold item is like having a jackpot lineup in a slot machine. In fact, take one of those, replace the fruits and the symbols with CSGO skins, and you have a CSGO case. That's the reason they all react that way, and you might have noticed, they also show the value of the item, because they're not excited by the item itself, but the value behind it. If they would unbox the same item, but it would be sold for 3 euro, do you think they would react the same? Of course not. They are yelling because they know they've won something, as if they've just hit the jackpot. And down the line, even the ones who refuse to promote CSGO gambling websites will end up promoting gambling through the CSGO cases. That's what I want you to understand, it's overwhelmingly present. And to clarify, I am not calling out these individuals for opening CSGO cases. I'm just highlighting the problem inherent to the design and the accessibility of those CSGO cases. Some are actually opening these cases as a way to show that because the odds are low, you should gamble on their sponsor but some others refuse to promote unregulated gambling sites and they are just spending their money in CSGO cases while saying that you shouldn't do it. There's a bit of everything, obviously, and I wanted to add this nuance. However, the result of this is that if 80% promote unregulated gambling sites, and out of the 20% others, let's say that half are doing CSGO case openings, that leaves us with 10% that do not engage and do not promote these gambling behaviors. In the youngs and in the adults, we are creating a habit, a normalization. Keep in mind, we are talking about a game, Counter-Strike is a bloody FPS, the focus of the content should be around the game, but in many cases, it's not. Gambling is everywhere in CSGO and you will find it in different forms, and I would even argue that it's become impossible to dissociate gambling and CSGO at this point. And the whole ecosystem is very profitable if you happen to be in the middle of this and remain quiet. The reason I'm attacking everyone all at once is because if you zoom out, you realize everything is connected. Let's look at the distribution chain. For the CSGO websites to reach the audience, there needs to be a lot of complicity from the industry. The websites are using the trademark and the API of Steam, so if Steam would stop them, that would be the end, but they don't. Now the content creators, they are tied by different laws and it would be illegal for them to promote unregulated gambling sites. There's also the question of ethic and morals and the advertising rules that even if they were promoting legal gambling they would have to respect. These are points of tension that could break this chain, but it's not enough pressure to refuse the money. So now they are depending on the next link, which is the platforms. Both Twitch and YouTube clearly say they forbid it. In fact, have a look at this interview from the Twitch CEO. The thing that was growing was these unregulated unre offshore gambling sites. And so the amount of money that was flowing um, where our creators was building the community to drive people to these sites, it was a significant amount of money. So we decided we banned the unregulated. Um, but in general, it's there's no problem with um, streaming gambling. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we do have a problem if you're streaming these un unregulated third party. Sites. Well, I guess it doesn't apply to the CSGO category. So the creators have no repercussions and the platforms won't stop them either. And that's why 80% of them are sponsored. And now we get to the audience. They live in different countries and they have different rules. But the general idea is that unregulated sites should be IP blocked and not advertised in this country. But because regulators and laws aren't catching up, yet again, the chain remains intact. 
And to be fair, because those websites are based in distant islands, there isn't much to do, that's the freedom of internet. Just because something isn't allowed here doesn't mean it shouldn't exist online. As an example, what could Germany do? They hold no power over the websites themselves. However, they could punish creators who promote the websites from Germany. But they don't. And the audience itself got drowned in this. It's normalized and doesn't even recognize the difference between unregulated gambling and legal gambling. So no backslash from that side either. In the end, every element of that chain holds the power to either stop or greatly limit this thing. But no one bats an eye and we are here today. So if you zoom out, you realize that yes, those websites are a problem, but they are just a part of the equation that allows this ecosystem to thrive. And fun fact, it is not just happening in CSGO. I've come to find there is the same situation happening with other games and I will let you guess the common link. Here's the website to gamble with your skins from Team Fortress 2. Guess whose game is it? Valve. Here's the website to gamble with your Dota 2 skins. Who is behind that game? Hmm, Valve. And even Rust, which isn't owned by Valve, but it's on their platform and they benefit from the Steam market sales as well. And you can even log in with Steam. The gambling scene in those games seems a lot less developed than the one in CSGO, but there's always Valve in the middle who does strictly nothing and once again a allows it to exist. How comes this is not considered gambling? Meet Leon Shao. He's a PhD fellow at the IT University of Copenhagen and holds visiting appointments at the Stanford Law School. He specializes in the regulation of loot boxes and gambling as a whole. He's been working closely with many governments like Australia, UK, Netherlands, and he worked with the FTC as well. His work has been published by many medias. Essentially, if there is one person to ask questions about loot boxes, that's him. And the thing is that in most countries, we're actually not sure whether or not this would legally count as gambling. Uh, my interpretation of the law would say that actually uh, the loot boxes that you just described in CSGO would in law be gambling in most countries. In terms of how gambling is defined in law, generally there are three elements. Leon will describe what Michele said already. Gambling is generally defined as consideration, chance and price. Uh, the issue is with the, with the uh, third element. This concerns what you can get from the CSGO case or from uh, any particular loot box. In most video games, what you can get stays on your user account. You can't transfer it to anyone else. And this is why in most countries that is viewed as those things not having real world monetary value. But of course, with CSGO, it is possible to transfer what you have obtained from your CSGO cases to another player. You can cash it out as well uh, through third party websites. And so in my opinion, because you can do those transferring things, that also satisfies the third element. It depends on which country uh, you're looking at, because uh, I, I know that in Finland, the uh, regulator who is in charge of looking at gambling, they've expressed the view that it does not matter whether Valve or CSGO says you can or cannot cash out. As long as it is true and possible that you can cash out, then that element is satisfied. In my view, uh, under English law, and in fact, under the gambling laws of quite a few European countries, this should count as gambling. So CSGO has a loot box that satisfies every element to be classed as gambling in the eyes of the law. Now, what about the mechanics of that loot box? In, in your opinion, and talking about the loot boxes in game that I just showed you, uh, do you believe we should let the young ones have access to this feature? Clearly, that loot box you show me right now match with many aspects with classic slot machine device. So no, young people should not have access to those things. And now what? We've established that the CSGO cases are a problem and they are in fact gambling both morally and legally. Yet, it is accessible and promoted to everyone. How much longer will we ignore the reality? It is true that the design of the CSGO loot boxes is not as predatory as the average unregulated gambling site. But the question we need to answer is this one. Is it gambling nonetheless? Yes or no? If it actually is, then why do we allow it to exist without regulation, age check or player's protection? Say that I'm watching a streamer opening CSGO cases, eventually he's gonna get lucky. He's gonna be shouty, he's gonna be excited, eventually jumping around, and he says he just won 10,000 euros. That looks cool, he's excited, the chat is excited, and everyone looks happy and excited, and I want that for myself. So eventually, if I get my hands on cash, I will be able to buy a Steam gift card in a physical store and redeem it to open cases in CSGO. That's what you're looking at right now, I am opening cases on my new Steam account called I'm14 
Union, by the way, and this account played a whopping total of zero hours of Counter-Strike. Something I didn't mention so far is how you receive these loot boxes. Unlike other games where you simply buy and open loot boxes from the menus, in CSGO you drop one or two cases per week. So you play a game and at the end of it you are rewarded by a drop, a CSGO case. And because the loot box itself has value in the Steam economy, you might look at it as an opportunity to open it for a discount. Because you don't have to pay for the price of the case itself, just the key now. Valve is rewarding you for playing the game with an opportunity to open the case for a discounted price. Couple that with the prestige and the hype around CSGO skin themselves, and you have the perfect mix for a normalization of gambling behavior. And it's far from affecting only the young ones. I would love it if you could take a minute of your time to comment below how much you have spent on Steam. I will put a link below to show you how to check, and I'm sure plenty of you will be surprised. I know that case openings are deeply ingrained within the culture of Counter-Strike, and attacking them is not an easy thing to do. As a matter of fact, as I'm recording this, we have 300k viewers watching a guy spending $100,000 on CSGO case openings, not gambling website, CSGO case openings. And there's a lot of watch parties of his stream, like it's an actual tournament. Look at the CSGO category. Gambling is so relevant to CSGO, it's crazy to realize. And this is why I brought these experts so they can explain it to you. You might flag me as an anti-gambling guy, which isn't really true. All I'm saying here is that, as it is right now, Gambling is way too relevant in CSGO, and since we have the same mechanics as an online slot, it shouldn't be accessible and promoted the way it is right now. If Valve was registered as a casino or an online training website, they would be just as unregulated as the gambling websites we talked about earlier. Think about it, they don't even show you the odds of what you are unboxing. $20,000 one click. Fuck! Yes! I yes. saw it! Bring it back! Titan! Bring it back, Titan! No, Titan! No! No! You have to be joking! No! There was a twenty thousand dollar capsule. This sticker is worth it's for it's, 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 it's three fifty. Right there, he opened a capsule sold for twenty thousand dollar, and it's in the game. This wasn't happening on a third party website. And by being so easily accessible, CS:GO cases have become a huge gateway to get a taste of the excitement that gambling has to offer. And eventually, you transition from CS:GO cases to CS:GO gambling websites, and eventually online casinos. These cases have become the biggest factor in the normalization of gambling that is happening around. CSGO and we need to address that. That's all I'm saying. I get To the question how old were you when you first gambled, out of 9,000 responses, 70.8% of you were underage. You know, I have an opinion on how I feel about that, and you probably have one as well, but I wanted to hear from someone qualified, and this is why I reached out to Tom. Yeah, so I, I'm Tom, I'm the communications manager at a charity called Gambling With Lives. Gambling With Lives is a UK-based charity campaigning for a change of flows in the UK, but not only that. Another side of the work is that we support families that have been bereaved by gambling related suicide so the, the charity was actually set up by a mum and a dad who lost their son um who actually also started gambling when he was a schoolboy. the young chap who was talking about blaming himself for not being able to stop and otherwise being a, a very rational person he knew it was bad for him but he couldn't stop it and, and that made him feel bad that's actually one of the big driving causes of the suicide it's not all about the money money often does play a factor in the suicides um but it's but it's not it's, it's far from being all about that in fact of the families that we support a, a lot of the people that they've lost didn't didn't lose significant amounts of money but gambling had actually destroyed their mental health and they they felt just felt a complete loss of agency is that we can't stop and they see the they see the sort of messages the messaging that's sort of put out a company's gambling in the uk is uh things like when the fun stops stop and gamble responsibly and these kind of messages that, that make it sound like it's just really easy it's a harmless hobby actually then when you do get addicted you try and stop and you find that you can't stop you've got all these messages saying oh yeah just stop just stop then you you begin to really feel a sense of deep shame 
and 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 there's a lot of stigma attached to that it's a diagnosable mental health condition and it, it does actually require specialist treatment um it's, it's been classified for 10 years now since 2013. i have interviewed around 25 people and i showed some of these interviews to tom and almost everyone i talked to expressed this idea this kind of shame to opening up about this because they would blame themselves for a lack of control let me ask you to make sure i understood it right all the money that you are talking about you have lost it where did you lose it actually it's it's about 50 50 uh cases and gambling sites for me personally whenever it came to gambling i was always making these decisions in a split second like it was a case of i would watch someone gamble and in my head I'd go, oh, yeah, that site exists. Oh, I could open 20 cases, okay. you know, so 50 bucks, 70 bucks, whatever, you know, go open some cases. And again, like I had mentioned, I relapsed yesterday. It was that split second in my head. I was like, surely I'll get something, right? Surely, surely I'm lucky. I'll be the one. Case. When you're having an argument with someone, right, things can get heated, you respond emotionally. And in situations like that, I'm always able to take a step back and go, hold on a second, let me take a minute, assess everything, and then make a decision. But for some reason with gambling, it's just yep. not the case. It's boom, instant. I have a really hard time admitting it even to myself that I have a problem. And the fact that I've been able to talk today as much as I have about it is surprising to myself because I have a hard time even admitting it to myself that I have a problem. I really want to change and I really want to get better so I can go fly airplanes, you know, I could have been, I could have already been finished probably at this point. And I still just, yeah, it definitely is taboo in, in my okay. opinion, the idea of gambling and, you know, it's okay if you win at gambling, but the second you lose everything or it becomes a problem, that's where, you know, it's kind of like alcoholism, right? You know, it's okay to have a few beers, but the second you say, yeah, I'm an alcoholic, well, now you're you've got mental problems and you've got, you know, okay. the stigma attached. I think it's in that same vein. I'm not a victim. Man, well, I never knew this table was gonna come, bro. <laughs> this is a Slicker. He used to be a popular Twitch streamer and it all stopped one day as he got exposed for borrowing money from other streamers and viewers to feed his gambling addiction. When everything exploded, he went live and this is what happened. I didn't know what to do. I lied to many people. I would never be able to ask for forgiveness. I'm ill. Uh, well, I need to say it. It's so hard to say this, I'm not gonna lie. Ever since CSGO, not to blame, but ever since CSGO came out, it was the first time I went on that site. And I, uh, I was, it was, it was a fun place to be on. You know, gamble skins and stuff. Eventually, I found out you could gamble with money. As many people, it started with CSGO and then transitioned. I'd scratch myself. Sometimes I'd lose, I'd smash my head against the wall. My intentions were never to scam anyone. I wanted to pay people bit by bit and sadly when I would owe this person, I would owe the other person extra on top and then that person would message me and be like hey where's my money? I send that money then the other person would be like where's my money? I have to owe him. Then I ask someone else hey can you give me 500? I'll give you extra. Gamble that money on top. I have borrowed in a month I had to pay 50,000 in a month I would have to pay someone 50,000 and I would have to even to some of my real friends who was investing in a house I need to get help I don't know how I always wished I could get help from it now don't get me wrong I'm not entirely taking away the personal responsibility but this is a very clear case of a gambling addiction that men lost control and trying to reason with an addiction is just like trying to reason with a phobia internet did not receive this well and the line between memes and harassment got really blurred look at the donations that are happening while he is live now look, if this is hard to watch, good, it is time we face this reality. We can't allow unregulated gambling to keep on going like this. The YouTubers and streamers who are making bank from people like Slicker keep on pushing one and only one narrative. That is the self-responsibility. It is your fault and only your fault. Alright, but then explain why legal and regulated casinos have to filter their player base. Explain why valid licenses come with 50 pagers in how you need to analyze the betting patterns and the behavior of your players and make sure that they can afford to lose the money they gamble. The casino is responsible for the product it sells. Do you think that would have happened on a regulated casino? Of course not. So why do we allow unregulated ones to thrive online, welcome everyone in, and then act surprised of the consequences? 
There are also identified risk factors for developing gambling disorder in adulthood. For example, certain personality traits. Some people are more impulsive, so are more prone to loss of control of our behaviors, to, to seek for uh, excitement, sensation seeking. And those kind of individual differences increase risk of developing problematic gambling patterns, for example. Psychopathological factors, for example, if you are depressed, if you have a trauma, if you experience even a moment in your life where you are not happy or you have a bad mood, it also increases the risk that you, you get involved in gambling as a way to regulate your mood, to cope with your situation, and in the end, translate into the development and the perpetuation of problematic gambling habits or gambling disorder. And uh, here you can make a parallel with alcohol use disorder, for example. Huh? A lot of people are depressed, start to drink, to, to cope, to avoid thinking, to uh, as a way of uh, self-medicate themselves. And they, they developed uh, an alcohol use addiction. I would say that no form of gambling is risk-free, but there are some forms of gambling that carry way, way, way less risk. If you move up towards the really addictive end are things like actually online casino games and online slot games. These are far more likely to cause addiction. Online slot games, I'm talking about here, they have addiction and at-risk rates of 45% which is around around about heroin's addiction and at risk rate. So Wait, they're, they're can, really... Can you explain the, the risk rate? How does that work? Is that 45% of the people who play it enough are at risk? Uh, yeah, uh, they're, they're at serious risk of addiction or will become addicted. That, that's, 45%? That's, you know, that's staggering. So it's, it's, yeah, it's really, really staggering. Because, you know, you can play them anytime you want. You can play them four o'clock in the morning. The sounds that they make, like they're all designed to keep you playing, essentially, and, and give you a little sort of rush of dopamine, but not not so much that you leave, but they just they just kind of keep you hooked and they might give you sort of near misses, for example. And they're designed basically to be to be addictive is, is the bottom line. And actually young men are at increased risk of getting addicted to gambling. If you're in your early 20s, you've probably got quite high, high disposable income, more drawn to sort of risk taking behavior and your brain actually isn't fully developed until you're 25. So you're more drawn to doing things which is risky. So yeah, young, young men are particularly um, targeted essentially by, by the industry and they, they do that in the UK via football it's the most popular sport in the country and especially with young men so how do you do how do you tie them together you just you just make gambling and football sort of the same thing and that gets you access to a huge audience absolutely huge audience if you're looking at where that money comes from we're talking about online gambling specifically 86 percent of that profit comes from five percent of you know, the, these games they're not addictive by accident is what I'm, is what I'm trying to get at yeah, the okay. products are desi they're designed to be addictive and, and addiction is is the sort of the foundation of their business model I want to take a second to explain that one I have read a study after a call and I think that this is the stat you need to remember it shows that for regulated casinos in the UK 86 percent of the revenue comes from 5% of the players. And that is in the case of regulated casinos, you know, the ones that have to respect standards, licenses, and filter their player base. Now, can you try to imagine what that number would be like in the case of unregulated CSGO websites that will allow anyone in? And what about those 100 million per month, Valve? How does it taste like? I guess money really has no smell. When you take a paycheck from these websites, this is where the money comes from. I, I want to do better. I want to not have to, you know, I don't want to be thinking every five minutes, ooh, on my next paycheck, what kind of knife can I go get on a gambling site? What can I go open? How many cases? How many this, that, and the other thing? You know, I want better. I do. I, I, I genuinely hope that, that, you know, you're able to, to enact some change for, for the better when it comes to the CSGO scene because it desperately needs it. Desperately. Bit of a misunderstanding, really about gambling addiction. Actually, what it does is addiction, it rewires the, the, the pleasure-seeking centers of your brain, essentially. So you, so you need to do that to feel good. So if you don't do it, you just feel awful. So you end up doing it and it, yeah, the, the younger you are, when you get sort of exposed to dangerous gambling products and start gambling, more likely you are to be harmed by them, essentially. Even if you're just sort of figuratively dipping your toe into it as a child, the effect of that normalization is when you sort of, when you do become old enough, you just think it's completely normal.
The case of Garrett was instrumental for me to understand the face of a gambling disorder. We see so many memes about it and we tend to forget there's a reality behind. Now of course, not everyone who gambles will develop an addiction, just like drinking a beer doesn't make you an alcoholic. That being said, you will agree on saying that if you started drinking at 12 and if everyone around you would be drinking as well, you will have a lot more chances to develop a problem growing up. That is the effect of normalization. It is important to understand that gambling is a broad term and within gambling, you will find different products, some of which will be a lot more addictive than others. And on top of that list, we find online slots, which is exactly what these websites are offering and how CSGO cases are designed. The whole player base of CSGO is constantly bombarded with online slots to a point it's normalized. We cheer for an online slot in an arena. Try to think of how cool this is going to look in the eyes of the young ones. It's also academic evidence that links the, the use of loot boxes as a child to um, gambling addiction as an adult because it, it really blurs the line. And it... Back to Garrett, we were talking about how much he had lost and as he didn't know we can actually see how much has been spent on Steam, it was a surprise for him. I said on I've lost approximately 7,500 and on CSGO I have sp holy shit. Uh, 14,600. Okay. So in total, $21,000. Okay. Holy shit. Is this the, I didn't... the first time you see this number then? Yeah. It's the first time I've gone through and looked. Jesus Christ, looking at that... Scares me. That scares me that I've managed to go through $20,000 like that and not realize how much money I've spent. So bad. It's so bad, you know. So I, 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 I think I. I sorry, uh -huh. but you know, just the simple act of taking the time out of your day to talk to me today has has really shed some new light on things for me personally. And I've already taken quite a bit away from this, and and I. I, I know that it's time for a change. I know that it's time, and I think you've kind of helped me to get to that point. And. Again, thank you so much for, for, for okay. even taking the hour or so to talk to me today. I, I, I seriously <laughs> can't thank you enough for helping me to just explore this. I am further. way too emotive for that. <laughs> I am way too emotive for this. I'm going to cry if you, if, you, if you go down that road. I'm way too oh, emotive. Perfect. It's okay. I was, I was about to earlier, but, but I was able to power through here. So, <laughs> um, you know, I... I'm gonna have to voice over to explain what happened, otherwise I will leak personal details. He wanted to take the first step and self-exclude himself from the website he has been using to gamble. And you're about to see yet another reason of why unregulated casinos are a problem. Going to. <laughs> it's exactly what I'm doing. So yeah, so they have uh, under here, it's this deposit restriction or full account restriction. Okay, break. Uh, uh, temporary block. Oh, so it, it looks like you can only lock it for up to a week. <laughs> Do you have any, has anyone told you any tips or given you any ideas as to how to combat that? Currently, there isn't any option for you to prevent yourself and self-exclude yourself from opening cases ever again. And in the case of unregulated CSGO websites, as you might have guessed, it's a jungle. Some do, but they will ask you a confirmation 24 hours later after you've asked for it. Some will only offer you one week and some don't even have that option. And I mean, why would they, right? It's way too lucrative for them to let you go away like that. Look, I am 14, by the way, reaches out to your support and says, is there a self-exclusion feature? To which we reply, hello, we do not have that. Okay, I understand. And you're like, have a nice day and a heart. What I'm trying to get you to understand is that if we were in a legal and regulated environment, it's very likely the operator would have identified and stopped Garrett from going any further until he proves he actually has the means to deposit like he does and he's not chasing his losses. On top of that, Garrett could register his ID on the registry and from here will never be allowed to access any kind of legal casino, whether it be inland or online. This is not an option for CSGO cases, and it's not even an option for most of these CSGO uh, trading websites. I went and asked if there's a self-exclusion feature. They go, hello, hello, items are sold automatically after a month, and they close the support. <laughs> what? And mind you, I'm still reaching them from an account called I am 14 by the way, and this one says, hello, we don't understand you. This is surreal. 
and I am convinced that if that button would exist at this moment, he would have pressed it. The example could not have been more specific, it is right here, right now, you can see it on his face. He would have pressed the button. And this is why a change needs to happen. Garrett, if you had a button right now in CSGO to exclude you from opening cases, that your account would Absolutely. be self-voluntarily excluded from opening cases, would you press it? Absolutely, in a heartbeat. Um, I, I, cases are the exact reason I'm in this situation. Yeah, sorry, I guess I should rephrase. They're not the reason. I am the reason I'm in this situation. But they were one of the they were the kind of the catalyst that got me to to where I'm at now. They were kind of the I'll use the term gateway drug, you know, loosely here. But I didn't go to a CS:GO gambling site before opening cases. I didn't go to a, you know, crypto casino or anything like that. It was the cases and then came the casinos, then came the and I think I'm able to Make that change. I'm gonna make this promise to myself right now that I, I am going to stay away from gambling in all forms, way shapes and forms, regardless. Now look, I know this won't concern the majority of you, so I'll make it quick. If you relate to Garrett or anyone else talking in this video, there is help and there are tools to help you. There's two things I want you to consider. Number one, chapter1.org, a completely free website, don't forget the dash by the way, that will give you a ton of resources and readings to help yourself or a friend. Number two, Gamban. Gamban is a software you can install on your PC and on your phone. It will block every regulated and unregulated website. I got in touch with Matt, the CEO, and sent him the list of CSGO websites which are now blocked as well. On top of that, because Gamban is subscription-based, I've already paid myself for the next 500 subscriptions. So this is for anyone watching right now. You don't have to pay, you don't have to put your credit card or anything, we have made it very easy. If you want to help yourself and don't know how, go to excludenow.com slash Jeff, which will take you to a landing page giving you three months for free with no strings attached. Obviously, this is not a paid promotion, I'm not getting any cents back. In fact, I've already paid, so it has to be used anyway. So please, do not hesitate, I would be very happy to help you take the first step. Can we actually change? I want you to remember this, the CSGO industry is complicit at every level. There is so much money involved for the one partaking that the change cannot come from within. Last week, as I released the part 1, it was such a dystopian sight to witness. I've got to see streamers reacting to it live while still promoting the very websites I am attacking. And one of them even said that he just got paid and, while agreeing the timing is bad, went on to spend the sponsor balance on stream on the unregulated website that is paying him. I haven't seen anything public from the casters, the pros or maybe 90 95% of the big names in the scene, yet my DMs are pretty active, filled with some of these people telling me it's a good video, it's an important subject, and they are happy I am doing it. But that's not something they will come out and say in public, because they don't want to stop taking that money regardless, and now it's even worse, because I showed them how bad it is, but they still choose to not care. I showed you it's illegal, I showed you it's immoral, I showed you the consequences and the damages. If nothing changes anyway, <laughs> that means it was a fight I was never meant to win. Think of how fucked it is, the, the length I went to, the risk I'm taking. You know, I'm attacking a very illegal and very profitable thing. Some people might not be happy about it, so let's just say I make sure that my door is locked every night and the rest is left to hope. And the responses I'm getting is that the industry agrees with me, but that doesn't mean they will stop. This industry will not stop unless it is forced to. Do you think we can rely on ethic and common sense? Well, look where that got us. And it's the same for Valve, there is simple stuff they could implement. For example, if you spend more than, I don't know, say 50 euro in loot boxes, they could trigger a KYC process, verify who you are and if you are of age. The average price of providers in that field is within 1 to 2 euro per verification. Considering the money that Valve is making, I don't think it's gonna be a problem of price. Also, we need an easy to find self-exclusion button. For the ones that notice they have a problem and want to try and fix it, at least give them the tools so they can help themselves. There is so much that you could do to at least pretend that you are trying to mitigate the damages of what you're doing. But again, no one cares. I shouldn't be the one coming up with those ideas and fighting that fight. I am just using common sense to be where I'm at right now. And I hope this will spark the discussion on a bigger scale about the monetization system of loot boxes in video games, especially when cashing out the item is a central element. 
And because I know some streamers will react in bad faith, I want to add that I am not attacking the concept of gambling as a whole. I am attacking the unregulated form of gambling used and promoted in the worst way. I want to point out that there's a huge difference between those two things, even though they relate to the same subject. And the ones with money involved have tried to blur that difference and keep those two things together. I'm not trying to remove your freedom to bet on the matches you watch. What I'm showing here is that in the current state of things, CSGO is heavily pushing its players and its audience directly into slot machines and casino games, and it's really not the same thing. Please make the distinction. I see nothing wrong with betting every now and then, however, betting can also be a problem, which is why regulations are important. We are at the point where the CSGO Twitter account, or the uh, X account, can't even retweet highlights from streamers without showing third-party gambling sites that are hosting casino games, not even betting. And like I showed you, anyone can access them just like anyone can open CSGO cases. Allow me to talk freely, I kinda wanna talk about myself now. After 10 years of, you know, doing this, I have recently announced that I will finally start to accept, or at least consider to accept, offers coming from CSGO gambling websites. But when I said that, I had no idea that things would be that bad. I've just assumed, like probably you and many more people, that if they are still existing today, if they are working with so many entities in the scene, that it would be within some kind of regulation. Obviously, I had no idea what I just stepped into. Within a matter of few weeks, the biggest offer I have received was a 120,000 euro per month in exchange of 8 ads. So the deal was that, in 8 of my videos during the month, I would put a 30 second segment to promote one of these CSGO websites. 500 euro per second. So uh, stay right there if you don't mind. Oh, I used to be sad, but then I discovered baguettes. I would have made 3,000 euro already. Let that sink in. It is so much money, it makes you lose respect for it. Now, I'm not gonna lie, there was a real temptation to not look any deeper, just take the money as it is, and that's about it, right? Like, what if I just close my eyes for once, you know? Like, what if, what if for once I shut the fuck up, I don't look any deeper, I'll just shut my mouth and, and take the deal as it is, right? I would have been set for life, essentially. We're talking about 120k per month, right? 20,000 euros per month. Are you kidding me? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, okay, 700,000 subscribers. Okay, maybe I just need to put this in, in, in context. For us, at 14 million subscribers or whatever we're up to now, a sponsorship deal of 120,000 euros a month would be huge. Massive. That would make that sponsor, over the span of a year, one of our largest sponsors, if not our largest sponsor by dollars. Like, that is enormous. Hang Ang Ganye, sorry, um, is not running a, a, a live convention or an, or an expo. Like, this is purely for online content. So if we were to take someone sponsoring just our content at that kind of a rate, they would be one of, if not our biggest sponsor at our size. That is wild. I could find a ton of reasons to justify it to myself, right? Because I deserve it. I've been fighting it for 10 years and after all, nothing changes. So why don't I just take the easy exit? You know, I would be able to help my family. Money is never gonna be an issue. I could look at my girlfriend in the eyes and tell her, money will never be an issue for the rest of our lives. And I could even buy YouTube premium if I wanted to. Yeah. This temptation is something that every CSGO creator had to go through at some point. And okay, maybe not all of you, because some of you are actual pieces of poop and, you know, don't think it was a long struggle for you. Now, what I don't understand is why on earth am I the only one who talks about that, right? Like, from my own bedroom and with literally zero experience, I'm not a journalist, I'm just a guy who makes uh, 360 no scopes, funny montages, video kind of stuff. How the hell? Am I able to show you how fucked the situation is from my own bedroom and with my very limited resources? Where are the journalists? Where's the media coverage about that? What the hell is going on? Why is no one talking about that? Is beyond my understanding. During my research, I have spent a lot of time and energy trying to get a comment or an appearance from a gambling commission. And I think one of them knew me as well because they replied with, Hey Jeff, we politely decline to comment. Some countries are fighting this, or so it seems. The one that seems to do the best right now is Denmark. Although it is not blocking every website, if you compare it to France, it really feels like an effort is being made. The Danish Gambling Commission, or the... Spielemingdigheden published a 2022 report in which they identified logging with Steam as an issue and they have blocked a few websites in that regard. So the question that remains is why not every website? And the response from the UK Gambling Commission might give us a clue. 
We are also aware that some websites have used these skins as a currency for illegal gambling. However, not all things that appear to be gambling fall under our regulation, including those style games that allow the purchase of skins which are classed as loot boxes. For these style games to be classed as gaming under the Gambling Act, there would need to be a change to primary legislation. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that they are telling me that they are aware of the issue, but they cannot act on it based on the limitation of the Gambling Act that regulates the scope of their action. This might be the clue for many more countries, and this is why the change can only come from you. And I mean, we. We need to make some noise. We need to ping medias, authorities, politicians, whatever. This needs to make the headlines to push for a change. Because right now, if a gambling commission, which is supposed to be here to prevent those websites from existing and doing what they're doing right now, tells me that they cannot act on it based on outdated laws, no wonder the websites don't even know what KYC is. And I want to point out that in the Counter-Strike world, it feels like no one is taking responsibility because the audience has been brainwashed for years. To a point where some of you were actually begging me to take the money, you know, like, go on, Jeff, uh, we won't be mad at you, you deserve it, and that kind of stuff. I mean, I, I, I kind of appreciate that, but also I don't, you know, hold me responsible, please. We have to break that cycle. I need you to understand that the argument of saying that they offer too much money to refuse leads to nowhere. It is such a broken logic, but it is used so often. Why do you think Valve remains quiet about this and keeps their loot boxes as they are? Yeah, well, too much money to refuse. So what, now we can't be mad at Valve? Why do the creators take the deals? Well, too much money to refuse, so I guess we can't be mad at them either. And that's why the websites exist, by the way. There is money to be made. And guess what? It is too much money to refuse. So with your logic, you can't be mad at anyone because you're essentially saying that it's okay to do illegal and immoral stuff if the amount of money you get in exchange is worth it. So where do we go with that logic? Anything for the bag? Counter-Strike, please wake up. Do I want money? Yes, of course, but is this? The kind of money that I want. There's a lot of stuff I know, because you know I'm pretty much a dinosaur at this point, I've been around for 10 years, I know a lot of stuff, but I've decided not to go public with it, because then it would probably turn into a witch hunt, which is not what I'm trying to do. I want to act for a change, I don't want to act for views. Yeah, I'm gonna get some views if I start some drama, but again, if I wanted views, I would have uploaded videos in the past two months, and if I wanted money, I would have taken the deals. I have committed to this because I truly believe we need to change, it is time for a change. If we look back a couple of years ago, I believe we would be shocked to find so many ads and promotions for cigarettes everywhere, and I think that 50 years from now, when we look back on today, we will have the same effect but for gambling and how gambling is advertised everywhere. In Counter-Strike world, we are even talking about unregulated gambling, which is a lot worse. So that's it. That is four months of my life. Um, I have posed everything else I had ongoing to get here today. And if I look like shit, it's because I feel like one. It's an incredibly toxic environment. I'm not gonna make friends, I'm gonna burn a lot of bridges, and I expect some kind of hate, maybe backslash, coming from the CSGO gambling community. So please, let me prefire that. If online gambling was just as regulated as physical casinos, we wouldn't be here today. CSGO cases, gambling websites, and crypto casinos based in distant islands. You are bypassing the ethical forms of limitations you have to respect, which are called regulations. You are bypassing those regulations, and this is where I have a problem. Believe it or not, but I am okay with the idea of gambling if it is done the right way. A way where you have the necessary and mandatory licenses that forces you to filter and protect the player base against the product you are selling them. A way where you are not advertised and endorsed by role models in the most irresponsible way, and in total disregard of the laws that exist to again protect the player base. Down the line, I don't think a reasonable human being can watch the entire documentary and tell me that, you know what, no, never mind, everything is alright, we don't need to change anything. That being said, I am not asking for views, for credit or anything. The only thing I will ask is for this to make some noise, so help me get some streamers to watch this live, big ones, small ones, you have my full permission to use this video the way you please. React to it, re-upload the React on YouTube, whatever you want to do, it works for me. I want to thank the experts and the lawyers for their trust and getting involved with this, and I want to thank the people who were brave enough to talk about their problems in front of a camera for the entire internet to see, talking about their problems, their addictions, all of that they've opened up in the only hope to help other people. It's a brave thing to do, and I really hope my community will do justice to that. 
Now, it is time for me to go AFK for a bit. I need to get away from, you know, <laughs> all of that. Um, I'll come back in a bit, and in the meantime, mandatory posture check. In those moments of self-clarity, I keep telling myself this exact same thing of, I need to stop, I need to do better, I need to not do this. And then I fall victim to it again. I fall back into the cycle where I watch a video of someone gambling because it gets on my YouTube recommended. I watch it and I'm like, oh yeah, I can open cases. I got some money, I got paid last week. It's that moment of cloudiness, that snap second. I'm hoping, you know, maybe someone who's maybe 16, 17, maybe just turned 18 can look at that and go, man, I really don't want that to be me. I hope someone can, can hopefully look at anything anyone here has said and either recognize that they're at the start of their gambling or even if they're at the end where they're like, holy crap, I've spent more than this dude, you know, or even if you've spent half of what I've spent or three times as much, it doesn't matter if you, I hope someone can recognize that, you know, that they have a problem. I, I urge everyone who, who either regularly or has, you know, frequented gambling sites or opens cases on CSGO to, to really self-reflect and, you know, go, how much a month am I spending on this? Is that something that I can afford to lose or am I doing this in hopes of getting rich? If you're doing it in hopes that your next click will be the big one, well, like I was, well, I hope someone can, can look at that and go I, I, and have the same realization that I did yesterday of I'm not the special one.